So for a while now, I have watched people and watched myself react to strong non-dual pointers as too zen or you didn't listen to me, this feels like gaslighting, I don't feel understood. And sometimes people do get in the habit of just lazily like throwing out non-dual pointers. But it's within ourselves the decision to really like really define what it is that we want and stop sort of like groping around in the dark. <laughs> and so last night this analogy came to me <laughs> and usually these analogies come to me just like in sleep or all of a sudden I have an insight, but this one came in a much more funny mundane way. So I heard my husband come upstairs to go to bed and I knew he was going to go to the bathroom and I really had to pee. So I ran ahead to get to the bathroom before he could. And I was stumbling around and he comes in and says, there's a wall there. <laughs> and I went back to bed and this whole analogy came to me. So when I was a little kid, I remember getting super sick and super disoriented and disillusioned in the night. And I felt like I had to throw up and I wanted to get out the door into the bathroom like right then. But I could not find the door. The door was directly across from my bed and super easy to find. And I had no issues ever finding the door. But on this one night, I went round and round and round my room like feeling things and absolutely could not find the door until eventually I did, but that experience just stuck with me. Like, how could the knowledge that, like, w the where the door was and all that be in my mind, but in that state, I could not access it whatsoever. <laughs> and that's basically, like, our states and how we function, that we are not separate from any of the dream states or archetypes or any collective consciousness. There's no borders to our mind or our psyche, but we can only access so much at any given point. And so when you're a teacher, it's like you're standing in a dark room with somebody and you have knowledge of the room, but you also have knowledge of the darkness and of what that person is experiencing at the time and how they're seeing things. So you can give them pointers. You can say left or right, or you're hot or cold. Um, and you don't want to actually physically take them and push them out the door because it's for them to, to figure out and it's for them to discover. But what you also know is exactly where the light switch is. So you can take the light switch and flip the white light switch on. But unless that person really is really clear in that moment that they want to get out of that room of suffering, what happens when you turn that light switch on is, oh my God, my eyes, turn the light off because they aren't adjusted to the light. And so often that's what we do as teachers. And sometimes you have to give people directions in the dark and other times you have to turn on the light. But for you yourself, like what you're receptive to and what you want, the teachings you want and what you want to discover, get really clear about it. Because many of us have never had it presented to us that it's possible to transcend suffering. Like I say, it seems like the craziest thing that you could ever want, that we could take these beliefs that seem so male and female and life and death and all these dualities and beliefs and just like see through them somehow. It seems absolutely crazy and insane. But when you say, yes, that's what I really want, when that light switch comes on, you are thrilled to let your eyes adjust to that light. 